Okay, this one is your energy question. So just label out all the things first. So this is 2.5 kg. Uh, vertical distance is 1.8. Speed of sphere at Q is 5 meter per second. Distance PQ is 5 meter. Okay, uh, I think part A, you just refer to your textbook. There must be three components. Cannot be created nor destroyed. Can only be transferred from one body to another body. Can only be converted from one form to another form. Okay, loss in GPE. Loss in GPE, I think it's quite easy. You just take PE equals to MGH. So therefore, you will get 2.5 times 10 times 1.8. So the answer will be 45 joules. Okay, then followed by the gain in Ke of the sphere as it travels from P to Q. So the loss of PQ must be equal to the gain in PQ, right? Uh, wait a minute, is there any... Um, hmm... Any tricks? Let me see. Ah, uh. gain in Ke must be the loss of Pe. Is it a smooth slope? They didn't say. Okay. Oh, good. We cannot just say that. Okay. The reason why I paused just now is because if I am assuming the loss in PE is equal to the gain in KE. I'm assuming there is no energy loss. But uh, I got a feeling that there is energy loss because of part C. You see, they already hinted to you that B part 1 and B part 2 is different. So I know that I cannot just put 45 here. So when I relook at the question, I realized that at part P, it is initially initially at rest and at Q there is some velocity meaning that I can actually calculate what is my gain in Ke so my gain in Ke must be equals to half mv square okay uh, minus zero okay because why I minus zero this zero represent the amount of Ke at P okay so once I do that I just need to put in my numbers I will get thirty one point two five. So, like I say, it's safest to keep as three SF. Okay, just here bracket three SF. Okay, you'll be fine. Uh, no one can fault you if you have stated everything correctly. So, as you can see, forty five. So the loss in PE is not totally accounted for by the gain in KE. So there must be some energy loss, huh? So it means that there is some energy loss. So in this case, I, I didn't consider friction in here. So I can say that the energy loss is due to work done against friction and air resistance. Okay, now the common mistake uh, among students is that they will just say, oh, energy loss due to friction. Okay, that is not a very precise or accurate uh, explanation because energy loss is in joules, friction is in newton. So you must go and put in the work, work done against what and what. Yeah. So I'm supposed to calculate the average uh, frictional loss. So in this case, I'm assuming, okay, no air resistance. Eh? Okay, because if not, I would not know how much energy is spent on overcoming the work done against friction. So in this case, I would know that the work done against friction must be equals to 45 joules minus the 31.1 joules, 31.3 joules. So I would get 13.7 joules. This is the amount of energy I need to account for. And if I express my uh, work done into its formula, it will be the friction multiplied by the distance that it travel. And I know that distance it travel is 5 meter. Okay, this slope. Right? So. It will be your friction, 13.7 over 5. So I would get 2.74. So it is 2.74 and it's frictional force, so it's Newton. Uh, don't worry about the truncation error. Okay, it's alright.